exercise is to take that motif through your triad that you're visualizing. So you get this D minor, E major, A minor, D minor. You know, just you navigate through those changes. That's, again, that's a challenging, it's a big study, but this is why you're here. Adding some articulation, some slurs like this. Or maybe this. But the, the foundation is still there, just targeting those core tones, but trying to make it fancier and fancier. I always use minor swing as the first song, so if you want to pull that out, we're just going to kind of get started on it. Of, uh, the chord, the flavors, as I kind of just demonstrated this chord. It's uh, you on the chart, when you look at a chart, like a lead sheet, it would just say A minor. But we, uh, we actually really want to try to bring out the sixth degree, the A minor sixth degree. So just so you know, theoretically, when we talk about chords, again, you might see A minor. On my chart though, I wrote A minor six, just to be a little bit more specific. But on a fake book or lead sheet, it might just say A minor. So again, we're looking at the minor swing lead sheet or my arrangement in tabs. If you wanna look at the tabs, you may just stick to the lead sheet. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna walk you through it. Theoretically, however, just a quick little bit of theory, the sixth degree, if you're wondering, what is that sixth degree? You take your fifth degree and you go up a whole step above the fifth. So on A minor, A minor is A, C, E. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> so, the, you know, A, C, E, that's the melody. It's just a triad. But when you add the sixth degree in, you get this flavor. And that that's a very important color in Gypsy Jazz. And here it is with the chord. So we want to start to find those sixes. Here's D minor six. So right there, Hopefully that will be like, oh yeah, that sounds more gypsy jazz. Really learning to hit those six degrees. When you do your arpeggios for soloing, or when you add your comping chords, you wanna add that six degree in. So again, if you don't know where that is, make sure you know where your fifth degree is, and then go up a whole step. And then, you know, guitar players will have those shapes already for you. D and for guitar players, we could just simply move our hand up once we have A minor six to D minor six. It's kind of the, the quick and easy way to get started. But when you actually look at the melody, it is just triads. So this is a good lesson on just, hey, I need to learn my A minor triads, <laughs> D minor triad, E major triad. So the chord, it's just three chords, essentially. That's the, sim the, the basic version of minor swing, just three chords, A minor, D minor and E7, but E7 can be broken down to, if you remove the seven, to just a triad, E major, okay? So again, for soloing, when we look at the, I'm just, this is kind of an overview, but when we look at the worksheet later, for soloing ideas, you'll see, oh, Tracy just wrote A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, D minor, E major, A minor. And that's kind of the approach for soloing. D minor, A minor, E major, A minor. And that's a beautiful approach. Really simple and pure, just playing triads. Again, kind of being inspired from the basic melody. Okay, so here we go. The melody is this, A, C, E. And it's just chord notes. One, two, three. Yeah, we're gonna take it very slow. I'm just gonna walk you through that. And I'm playing it here. Okay. You can do it here. Do it anywhere you want. Experiment even. That, that way you really learn your, your triad notes, A, C, E, okay? And it's just quarter notes, make it nice and strong. Now there is a little slur here after that, but I'm gonna not show that right now. I'm gonna show you the basic melody without the ornamentation. It's just this. D minor. Mm -hmm. Hey, nice, you could hold it as a chord shape. 
but I like it still detached, even though I'm visualizing a chord shape, D, F, A. Okay. Ooh, nice, you hit the sixth degree there. <laughs> but yeah, D, F, A. So here we go, the simple version of basic melody. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and hit the A. A, two, three, oh, that was a stop time there, you just hit that. On the fourth time, you just hit the A quarter note. Yeah, A minor chord, just stop, and then the bass would fill typically a melody. There's an outro melody that's different from the intro melody, so. But let's try that again. Any questions on that? Easy? Try. Good, yeah. It's the one chord and the four chord. A minor to D minor. We're in the key of A minor. And don't worry, I'm going to talk about scales and stuff too for you. Um, so you kind of really understand what's happening here with the sound, its flavor. Mm -hmm. But now I have to tell you something. Even though that's, the, that's the, the main melody, that's not what Django plays. Django plays a harmony to what Stefan plays. But most people don't do that unless they want to recreate the original. Django's doing an inversion, A minor down here. <laughs> So he's actually starting on E. He's going E, A, C, while the main melody, Stefan, would be going A, C, E. And then, this is this is very telling as far as his flavor of it. For the D minor chord, this, he's starting on B, a B natural, just so you understand why the sixth sound is so important. He's on the sixth degree, and he's going B, D, F. Okay, so you get this flavor, B and D. I'm playing it as third, so you can hear the harmony of it, this. So hit, hit the harmony of it with Stefan and Django together would sound like this. Again. That's harmonized. So if you have, if you're jamming with somebody, learn the harmony part too, or learn, learn Django's part. And just remember, this is not written, just so you know. I do, I do have it on my score, but... One, two, a one, two, three, four. And stop. Two, three, four, one, two, repeat. Three, four, one, two, three, four, and then now you'd be playing chords, and then someone would be soloing. Like that's the jam part that we're gonna do today, because I'm gonna teach you soloing ideas so you can get started on this. Gypsy jazz is associated often with blazing tempos, kind of maybe like bluegrass, but um, that one sounds good at a medium swing. Let's do it just one more time at a slower tempo. I'm gonna play the harmony so that you can hear what that sounds like. One, two. A one, two, three, four. Nice. Two, three, four, one, two, three, repeat. Yeah. One, two, three, A minor. And now we're just jamming. Kim's gonna take a solo. D minor. E7. Back to A minor. I'm just gonna keep going. You can jump in, but I'm gonna talk about chords. D minor. And back to A minor. I'm playing A minor six, even though I'm saying A minor. E7. And back to A minor and E7, and top, D minor, E7, A minor, D minor, back to A minor, here's E7, Seven. Take it 
Take it, Greg. No. Okay, we can stop there. I just again, I'm just kind of throwing you into the jam session portion of it. It's like, hey, what do I do now for soloing? I'm gonna teach you really simple ideas to get you started. But chords. Let's go ahead and talk about chords. But yeah, let's talk about these shapes so up here. We have your middle finger on A. That's the sixth string. Mm -hmm. The bass note, essentially. This is what's important when we play the progression. Skip the fifth string, and this is my general rule for chording in general, is that if I'm playing the roots on the sixth or fifth string, you're either gonna do one, either or. So in this case, we're muting the fifth string because we have the root on the sixth. So nothing. And then the F sharp. That's your sixth degree. And that's a fourth fret. So, so far we have A and F sharp. And then we're gonna put the third on there. It's a flat three, so it's a C natural. This is all A minor, yeah. So it's A, F sharp, C. And even there, these that would be just fine to, to do for rhythm guitar. You could just do three note. Okay, just that was, that'd be considered an A minor six, even though the missing note here is the fifth degree, the E natural. Now it's a full A minor six chord shape. A, C, E, F sharp. But it's not in that order. It's not stacked in that order. We're spreading it out. A, F sharp, C, and E. So the tabs is, this is how I say it, just to teach it quickly. Five, X, four, five, five. And then X, nothing on the first string. So we're, that's the tricky part. If you're not used to it, you have to dampen or mute those strings, the, four, the five and the and the one. So again, if you're writing down these chord shapes, this one is five, X, four, five, five, X. And when you hear it, even though you're strumming all six strings, you're only hearing four. So this, you re really wanna make sure you, that you mute those strings. It's all in the left hand. talk about strumming both articulation because uh, there's a lot of a lot of articulation a lot of dampening it's actually called la pump and the french term of it where you're kind of just pumping these strings you're not just holding it down so it sounds like this we don't want that sound well maybe you do at one point to make it like that but we want this sound we want it detached and short we want a nice short quality with a slight accent on two and four. So it sounds like this. Kind of want to lean into it. Just imagine there's a jazz drummer playing brushes and they're doing that light accent on two and four with the brushes or even the hi-hat. And that's, that's what starts to make the rhythm swing because it's really just all quarter notes. Your right hand is just going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. You're just keeping the beat, okay? In this style of music, often there is no drummer. It's just guitar players or string players keeping that. And now simply, once you get that A minor six chord, slide it up to the 10th fret. Now you have D minor six. And again, you wanna get the dampening. Yeah, that's, this is, a, this is again my introduction to it. You know, um, there's other shapes we can use, but this is a quick and easy way, basically. You go A minor six for two bars, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, switch. Same shape, that's what's so nice about it, okay? And then now the chord says E7. Most guitar players would go down here, but we want this shape. And this is still kind of a cowboy shape. It kind of comes from the C chord. Here's C7. So I'm just sliding it up. Now it's a movable shape. So again, if you don't know it, just play C major. Add on your pinky on the third fret on the third string, and it becomes a C7. But we want E7, so you gotta slide it up to the, so the root is on the seventh fret, E7. Okay. Learn the progression. Ideally, you would memorize it, but you have the lead sheet there. So let's talk about it. We have A minor for two bars. Talk one more time about articulation. 
I'm gonna just do one articulation for now. I'm gonna go long, short, long, short. At this tempo, that's what I'm feeling. So in order to achieve the long, short quality, you wanna hold that shape down, strum once, and then hold it down still while you strum the second strum, but then lift off immediately. So that's the short quality. It's gonna be long, short, long, short, long, short. And that's a really nice articulation at a slower tempo. Yeah, long, short. You might say it long, short, long, short, long, short. Yeah, just get used to doing that with a nice relaxed right hand. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, long, short, long, short. Now let's go to D minor. Let's keep this tempo. We're doing a slow jam. Back to, or to E7. This is, we're going through the form now of the solos. And then back to A minor. That was the first eight bars. It's a 16 bar progression. D minor six. Long, short, long, short, long, short. Long, back to A minor six. That's the one chord. I'll often talk in numbers too. E7 is the five chord. That's where the tension is. And five will always go back to the one right here. That's the resolution. And then put the five here, quick change. And then this is now the top. A minor. D minor. And make sure you follow the progression. E7. A minor. D minor. That's the four chord. We're at measure nine of the form. A minor. E7. Back to the A minor, the one. This is slow. E7. And back to the top again. Long short. D minor. E. And back to A minor. Measure nine, D minor. That's the four chord. And back to A minor, the one chord. Yeah. And to the E7, the five. Feel that tension of the five. Where does five want to go back to? The one. And to the E7 as a turnaround. Back to the top of the 60 bar A minor. Let's pick it up just a little bit in tempo. Right there. D minor. Let's keep it there. And the five. E7. And five wants to go back to the resolution, the one. Four. D minor. And that's going to go back to the one. And the five. And back to the one. And the five. And top. D minor. Don't mind me, I'm just having fun jamming with you guys. D seven. Back to A minor. D minor. A minor. And the five, E seven. Good, five. Faster, A minor. D minor, four. Long, short, long, short. E seven. 
A minor. Here comes a D minor, four. And back to A minor. Here's a five, E seven. And back to A minor. And E seven, the five. And now, melody out. D minor. So the melody out follows the form. E7. Give me a stop here. Two, three, four. And repeat that. A minor. D minor. This is the outro melody, just to demonstrate. Yeah, E. And then stop right here. One. And that was the ending lick. So what we just did there, nice guys. What we just did there was we pretty much went through the whole song. I want to get you soloing here in a minute. Um, but there's also the ending melody, and I do want to hit that next so that you have the whole complete song. You have the intro melody, the outro melody, which is different from the intro melody. As you heard, it actually is played with the backing. It's not just solo, but it's or acapella, rather. It's, but it's played with chords, and it's actually repeating those eight bars. So it's A minor, D minor, E7, A minor. Then it repeats. It doesn't go through the whole form of the song, if that makes sense. Uh, so let's, before uh, we hit the soloing, let's do the outro melody so that you learn the outro melody. It's uh, You can look at the paper or just follow me. It's that A minor triad. But instead of like the beginning where we switch to D minor immediately, you stay on A minor, but you do this rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, and, and. And there's just a little bit of syncopation that's slightly different from the intro melody. And that was just all on A minor. Can we all get the rhythm for that? That's what it's really all about. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and. Good. Now let's do, yep, now let's move it to D minor. Do the same thing that we just did mo rhythmically. So it's going to be on D minor, one, two, three, four. One, two, and, and. Nice. Yes, yes, and then we take it to the E major triad. The intro melody did not have an E major triad, just A minor and D minor. So again, we're following that form. So make sure you know your E major triad. The three notes are E, G sharp, and B natural. Okay. And we're gonna do the same rhythm uh, with those three notes that we just did. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, good. And then actually there's a little bend. Or you could just do, hit the A minor. Yeah, in tab, if you didn't know the E major triad, if you wanna look at my fingers here, it's just this. Again, you know, think of it as a chord shape. and. Uh, you'll, you'll learn your triads really well by learning the style. So we have the A minor was this. See how I'm holding it as a chord? D minor. E major for the E7. And then the A. So that last part on the E to the A minor was this. There's a little bend that's in there and you don't have to do that. You could just, yeah, don't worry too much about it that's on the B note. You can just do this. And then, then hit the A note. And then the bass again would do a fill there if you have a bass player. Anybody can do the fill really. And then it repeats and then there's an ending lick that I'm excited to show you. However, let's just get that far first. One, two, A minor. D minor. major triad two three four one two repeat four D minor E major and here's the ending lick one And there, that, I did specifically what Django did on one of the recordings. But let me show you the ending lick from what I just did there. The ending lick's always the same for any instrument. It starts on the five. So the five of A 
is E. It starts on the E note, so find an E note. I'm gonna grab this one here. And I'm gonna show you, first of all, just watch me, watch, watch, kind of, you'll get the idea of, of what it is by just watching this, one. So it's a chromatic lick. It starts on the five, the E. It goes down a half step. This is called the lower neighbor tone. And then back to it. And that, that's actually very quite colorful. We're gonna talk a lot about that in a second too. So, and then you walk it up chromatically to your A, the root. So it's one and two and three and four and one. And then you can slap on your A minor chord of choice. I like to do colorful chords like this or this. We'll talk about that too. But the rhythm is also important. It's the chromatic lick starts on the and of one. And I know that lead sheet shows an A there on one. Uh, don't play that, just put a rest on one so there's nothing. So just say one, like this, three, four, one. Okay, uh, I'm just showing it to you on one string. I, I'd actually recommend that you visualize that uh, one string lick one. That's not the most practical at a fast tempo. That's where I would cross over strings. I'll show it to you a little bit quicker. Three, four, one. I'll do that again. One. So you wanna work out your fingerings, one. So that you can, you know, get it down fast. And that is a lick that you'd wanna practice over and over with a metronome so that you can nail it every time <laughs> on a gig or in a jam session. So it's always, and that, that lick, by the way, because it's chromatic, it works for songs in a major key as well. We could do that on Sweet Georgia Brown and next week and any song, the other song that, that we may hit today. Yeah, so check it out in context. One. And so let me show you here how I'm crossing over. I'm starting it, this is how I wrote it on my sheet here. I'm starting here on this E. I recommend the middle finger, and then you're gonna go to the first finger. Okay, get used to doing that. So it's one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and, and then chromatically, I like to use all four fingers. Not everybody likes to use their pinky, but it would look like this, one. And then once I get to my pinky, this is the F sharp, then I cross over to the next string and I complete it there going G, G sharp, A. Okay, so it's like this, one. Uh, let's put it in context again. One, or let's just play it together a few times here. One, two, three, four, one. Yeah, you can make, typically I'd make it short. Uh, that last note, like that. And then get ready for the chord, the A minor six to complete it. And that chord should actually be on the and the two. So it's one, two, and. That, that's called the Charleston rhythm. This one, two, and. One, two, and. And that's a very common swing rhythm. So you, you wanna we wanna practice this a few times to really get it down, that, that, that riff there or lick, rather. I'm gonna play it here, though, too. Um, I'll show it to you here, one. One. Again, I'm just practicing it so that when it comes time to do that, I can do it, you know, on any song. Again, this is, this is, this ending lick is used, like, probably 70 to 80% of Django's ending licks, you'll hear this um, in his music. Let's try it again. And then we'll piece it all together. Just the ending lick with that chord, if you can slap that on. Two, three, four, one. Mm -hmm. Fancy. <laughs> that was fancy. Uh, all right, let's do it in context of the outro melody, then we'll hit some soloing ideas. Uh, the whole outro melody from the A minor, D minor, E, and then the stop and then repeat A minor, D minor, E, and then with the ending lick. One, two, slow, four. One, two, and, and D minor. One, two, 
two, three, four, one, two, and, and E major. Great. A minor stop. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Repeat. A minor. One, two, and, and D minor. One, two, three, four. One, two, and E major. Think about that ending lick. Don't be afraid of it. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and, and then a big chord, tremolo, and then, there you go. Let's practice it again. <laughs> that, well, it's tricky, that's what I'm saying, you know, you want to really get that ending lick down. If Maybe it's just working on the fingering, but at this tempo, you can actually do this, one finger method, just go one. Okay. Right on the mandos too. Just make sure that you. I really need that pause because that takes me a while to figure out where I'm going to go next after I've done. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, oh, from that, that E. That part, I, I, I need that. Yeah. That beat to yeah. Be pause to get well, this and this is together. brand new for everyone except for you. Leslie's taken my class how many times? This intro class. Oh, too many. Yeah. It's oh. my favorite class. Good. I'm really happy to teach it again. I mean, this is just a two-week session, but I'm 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 gonna offer it again in, in a couple months. But I use a few other songs. Um, so Leslie was saying, okay, I want to get from here the E. One, two, and and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and. And again, I know it's brand new for you. So again, we're just practicing it together, trying to break it down so that you understand what's going on. You don't have to just read the sheet music, but you know, oh, I start on the E. And it starts on the and of one, one. And I'm adding a little bit of swing. You feel that as one, da, 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 da. It's not even, it could be, it could be one. Da, 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 da. That could be dramatic and staccato, but I'm kind of swinging it, one. Da, 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 da. So that's talking about this feel, da, 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 like a shuffle, the triplet feel. We'll talk more about soloing and use, getting that swing feel, but that's what I'm thinking, one. And just working that out everywhere, one. One. You know, we just want to practice that lick on all places of your instrument, your fretboard, all octaves. One more time, I'm gonna play chords for you, but I'll hop in on that, jump in on that ending lick with you. Nice and slow, this is just our slow, easy practice. One, two, three, A minor. Do, 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 sing it to yourself. Do, 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 D minor. Do, 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 E. Do, 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 A minor, stop. Two, three, four, repeat. Two, three, A minor. Do, 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 D minor. Yeah. E major, nice. Get ready for your ending lick. Figure out where your fingers are gonna go. Get ready, here we go. One. Nice, and a big ending here, there are tremolo. Sweet, good. Uh, one more tip as far as um, picking goes on this ending lick here. I'm often starting on an upstroke because one, one is a rest, so I'm going one, downstroke, and then and. So it looks like this, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and, and then one is a downstroke. So again, that's kind of what I would recommend is start on the upstroke on the and of one, one. And you can just practice that again, just your right hand. You can just stay on one string, but watch this just for practicing the right hand. I'm just, I'm just gonna do rhythm. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. One, and two, and three, and then one. Mm. Mm. What, there I, the first time I stayed on the first string, one. 
and I just shift. Well, I didn't do that very well. One. But usually I would cross over. One. So again, that's the right hand technique there if you want to get your picking down. If you, that's just what I like to do, uh, but you can also go all down. One. Three, four, one. But again, mm, you're going to find that by alternating your picking, you can get a lot more um, speed. One. One. I'm just demonstrating a few octaves for you here. Okay, good job. We've got the outro melody, got the intro melody, we've got the chords. What's next? Soloing. <laughs> The choice scale for minor swing would be a harmonic minor, that you understand why this could be a really nice scale to, sound, to play. Here it is on the guitar. It's very lyrical. Yeah, add some swing. Uh, over these chords. So, a harmonic minor uh, is A. You can play anywhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see on one string. A, B, C. And it, you can write this down on a piece of paper there. Um, a, B, C. One, if you're thinking scale formulas, some people like to think scale formulas, it's one, two, flat, three. That's, that sounds nice already. Then it's D, E, F. So notice how I'm kind of breaking it up as I'm showing it to you, and that works with a D minor. So we have so far A, B, C, D, E, F. We need one more note. T, Do. I'm thinking solfege from my music school days. G sharp, that's the leading tone and A, and that's it. That's your A harmonic minor. So let's do it very slowly, but it's nice to learn it, how I'm demonstrating here. Go one, two, flat through like this. It's very lyrical. A minor, A, B, C. Can I hear everybody do this? Da, da, da. And then on a D minor chord, go D, E, F. And then we need one more note, the G sharp on the E. And then resolve it to A. Now go backwards. Now let's play it as a scale slowly. A. Isn't that pretty? It's such a beautiful dark scale. Add some double picking like that. Add some slurs. Yeah, just goof around with that, please. I'm just gonna kind of play freely. Actually, you'll hear this when you listen to Gypsy Jazz. You'll hear them do a lot of the rubato intro like this. And then a lot of fills and noodling. D minor. And you can use this one scale throughout all three chords. Yeah, just have fun. Make it very lyrical. That's why I like that one string approach. So keep noodling. I just call this noodling. D minor. I'm just kind of playing the chords. You can noodle around and get the sound in your ears. Yeah, make it lyrical. Just going up and down the scale. Don't even worry about what chord I'm on, but hopefully feel that's the one chord. I am following the progression, just so you know. E7. And you're just having fun. Experimenting with that E, or sorry, the A harmonic minor. Yeah. Now you're probably wondering, why does this work over all three chords? 
Well, if I had my whiteboard here, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, C, E has that A minor triad. The triad, okay, that's very important, just A, C, E. D, E, F, it's in that scale as well. E, G sharp, B is in that scale. So all those triad notes are in that scale. And that's often how I choose my scales is I'll write out the notes of the of usually the triad, maybe a sixth chord or seventh chord if necessary, but the triad is the foundation. So again, if you wrote out collectively A, C, E, D, F, A, E, G sharp, B, and you put them all together in a scale, you have the A harmonic minor scale. And that's why that to me is the choice scale for this flavor of A minor, D minor, and E. Make this doodle all day, so beautiful. And then you might wanna to learn to target D minor, A minor, E. By targeting, what I mean by that is I'm actually like hitting the notes of the chord that I'm on. So, you know, a simple thing to do, if you hit A minor, start on A. <laughs> A, C, E, you know, finding those notes. And that's where we're gonna head, head into next, is to learn how to target by using the triad method. So you're not just noodling around the scale. But today I wanted to start off with the scale so that you understand where, that these triads are all contained in the A harmonic minor scale. So you can always just kind of noodle, because some people are like, oh, I can't keep track of what chord I'm on and when I'm soloing. Then I'm like, well, just have fun playing the A harmonic minor scale because that contains all those notes anyways. You don't have to necessarily think A, C, E, D, F, A, E, D minor. I'll just give it A minor. I'm just going to show you E, A minor, A minor, D minor. So again, now I'm kind of demonstrating like I'm targeting each one of those chords, if not just playing arpeggios and triads, trying to make music from it. But then we want to connect the dots so that we're actually landing and targeting those chord tones. And to me, that's what makes the style so melodic um, and lyrical is trying to connect those. And it's a very jazz thing to do. They say, you know, play the changes. You wanna, that's, you wanna bring out that quality versus like rock guitar. A rock guitar player would play pentatonic. <laughs> blues rock you know but that's not that's that's a valid approach and a valid sound and I do like to do that myself but again what I would highly recommend is to go beyond the pentatonic scale the A minor penta and learn to bring out the flavors of each one of these chords by targeting and or playing that harmonic minor scale now we get to do the targeting <laughs> uh, Actually, I'm gonna play a little bit more of the chords for you and, and you know, you can experiment with the harmonic minor scale. If you don't know, you know, and at home, you might say, oh, I wanna investigate this further and look at, you know, look up different things. I'm just gonna play it here on one string, one, two, flat three. And then D is the four, E is the five, F natural is the flat six, and that's a darker note. I'll show you what, I'm gonna play A in the bass so you can hear the F. That's pretty dark, right? Here's E, there's, and then check out the G sharp. But that would typically go with the E7 chord. But you know, like I said, if we're just noodling, you play that against the A, it sounds like this. Just so you hear this. E, against the D, listen to it, just so you know like, ooh, that's cool. Uh, D minor chord, listen to the G sharp. It's a flat five. It's almost kind of really bluesy. So we can justify every single note to the chord if we wanted to. Like, why does that work? That's not in the chord, but that's, you know, Django, actually, I'm, I'm gonna talk more about this. Django loved to play these really quirky notes, really colorful notes. So again, we'll talk more about that too. Um, but this is just an introduction that I wanna get you started on it, thinking both scales and now triads. So uh, for guitar players, um, or actually mandolin, make sure that you can find A, C, E. I know you know it because <laughs> that's the melody, but for soloing, this is the soloing portion here now. I want you to do this. I want you to go hit the A and go half step below. So you're gonna go da da da. Well, guess what? You're gonna, so you're gonna, that's a lower neighbor tone. Half step. 
Now we're gonna do that on C. And then E. And then we keep doing it all over your fretboard. That's what I'm saying is you can take this as far as you want to go. It's just a beautiful ornamentation, embellishment. Yeah, it's just a way to, instead of just playing ACE, 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 we're now starting to create these beautiful colors. And then we now the goal is to connect it to the next chord, which is your D minor chord. But let's just have fun on your instrument respectively, finding A and go lower neighbor, and then the next note, C. You can do it in any order. I guarantee it's gonna sound nice with our little orchestra here today. And then E. But make sure you target, the keyword is targeting again. A, C, E, wherever you want. You don't have to blaze all over the fretboard. Keep it simple, keep it swinging. Like, again, you know, just something that simple. Yeah, you can leave some space. Space is always good. Yeah. And if you, if you don't start where the next person starts, that's okay, it'll be harmony. <laughs> yeah. And just get used to doing that, those little wrists. Right, well yeah, Kim's on the D minor chord. Let's do it now on the D minor chord. What are the three notes of D minor? D, F, A, so again, for guitar players and mandolin players, try to visualize that a chord shape. Try it like this. So check it out. That's my D minor. Something like this. So the method here, by the way, I didn't talk about the fingering, but we can all do this. Even on the accordion, we could do the a la Django method, meaning just use these two fingers. If you, you, most of you probably knew Django had all of his fingers, but these two were permanently burned and, and glued into this shape here. So that he still used them for chords, but not for leads. He only used these two fingers. So most of the pictures you'll see of him are is like this. And um, it makes this, these licks really nice. D minor. E. This is what I'm calling a la Django, A minor. D minor. A minor. I'm taking it through the song. E, A minor, A minor, D minor. This is the fun part. E, it's a little game. A minor. Do you know where I'm at? E. And now we're soloing D minor, E, A minor, D minor, A minor, E, A minor, and top. I'm jumping in there, I know, and I'm just showing you again how to try to put it in context. Right now, you're probably thinking, oh, I gotta work on my D minor, my E one. So let's do that together again. Here's D minor. So again, the exercise, this is where I wrote out a series of exercises. I call them Gypsy Jazz Boot Camp, just so that we can practice these together. And I'll actually send everybody the PDF. It's a, it's a big study, and I have a backing track too of myself playing it. So you can jam along with me, but it's very specific. But again, you can hear that even if you start on a different note, you would be in harmony with me, it'll be fine but I'm just demonstrating it in one position here. So D minor is this. We wanna go. Actually, don't do that. Just stay in position. Don't try to stay close. Don't, don't get lost, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So just, yeah, you just do this. Just keep it super simple. That's very important as you're just learning to improvise in the style. And then back to A minor, we're actually playing the progression. 
can go in any direction. Yeah, just leave some space there. That's important. Let's go to the five chord, E major. The chord is E7, but remember, we're not worrying about that seventh degree. We're just playing the triad, one, three, five. So here's E, G sharp, and B. And maybe that's an E note. Like I said, you're going to master these triads. Triads are the foundation anyways. This is different from playing rock guitar, kind of where you're just saying, you know, pentatonic. This is, we're actually learning each one of these triads. Let's hang out in the D minor world for a minute. One, two, three, D minor triad. That way you really target those notes. And again, I would not recommend that you do the lower half step embellishment until you make sure you know where your three notes of D minor are first. That should be um, kind of a prerequisite that you can play D, F, A. And then try the a la Django, this. With that fingering. So again, the trick to that is making sure that you use your middle finger on the chord tones. And then that way your other finger, your first finger, will be the lower neighbor. That's the fingering trick. So D minor is this, but I'm thinking this. I'm so visualizing the chord tones, the arpeggio, but then you can, you know, they might say, oh, well, D minor is also this. So I go. So again, that's just a few, you know, tips on visualization. Make sure you can target D minor. Try that Django method, a la Django, using your middle finger first, and then go to the lower neighbor. I'm gonna show you some other embellishments, but we gotta start with this one um, first. Well, the first one would just be only playing chord tones. That's like this, A minor. Actually, I'm gonna start with my middle finger. D minor. E. A minor. D minor. And now I'm just... A minor. I'm only using chord tones. E. A minor. You do a lot of music with just that, too. But then when you add the lower neighbor... And it kind of buys you time, too, by doing that lower neighbor. You get, instead of doing this, you get. So again, that's the fun part, is connecting in. You can just go to YouTube and type in backing track, minor swing. You, there's like hours of backing tracks. You can just jam along with different people already creating these backing tracks for you. Right now, I'm your personal backing track. So D minor, let me make sure that you can do D minor. Then we want to practice switching from A minor to D minor. One D minor though, D, F, A. One, two, three, slow. We're just gonna hang out on D minor for a little bit. I might even give you a little moving bass line. Yeah. Beautiful. This is all just D minor. Just make sure that you can. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's important to stay on one chord. I find beginners try to do too, too much too soon without even hanging on one chord for a long time. You have to stay on one chord and really feel comfortable. Because now I'm gonna say, let's go back to A minor and you have to be ready for that. Here we go, A minor. Now we're just gonna go back and forth from A minor to D minor. But I'm gonna give you four bars instead of two bars each. Here we go, D minor. Nice. We're not gonna go to E yet, just back to A minor. This is four bars each. A minor, A minor. Here's D minor, D, F, A. Just make sure again you know where those notes are. Yeah, sounding great. Yeah, back to A minor. This is just a nice introduction jam. 
throw a little blue note in there, huh? Getting bluesy. Yes, you can add the doodling around. D minor. All right, I think we're ready for that E chord. E major. That sounds nice. See the harmony me? I like it. Stay on the E. Yeah, try the Django fingering. The two and first finger and second finger only, just for this lick. Yeah, it sounds kind of fun and playful, this little embellishment. And let's take it back to A minor right here. Beautiful. Yeah. Let's do four bars. We're kind of using the progression, but extending it. D minor. Ready? Stay on D minor. Okay, now get ready for that E major for the E7. Yeah. A minor. It's like a little game. It's a fun game. But wait for the next embellishment. D minor. Yeah, we're just doubling the chord, so it's D minor. There comes an E7. Nice harmony there. Give you a little shuffle feel. And back to A minor. Yeah, D minor. That's a shuffle. Ready for the E, the five? Yeah. A minor. Yeah, D minor. A minor. E. We're following the progression now. Two bars. We're playing the song. They like taking off the training wheels in A minor. And E. All right, don't worry about that. That's a quick change. And top, A minor. Get ready for D minor. Yeah, so see, you said you didn't know how to solo on this song, but now you have some ideas. E. You can do this all day long. And A minor. What comes after A minor here? This is D minor, measure nine. And back to the A minor. This will really help you learn your notes on the fretboard. And here's the E. And back to A minor. And I would say don't even worry about this quick change at the end. And melody out. Let's see if you remember this. D minor. E major. Two, three, four, a one, two, repeat, four. Yeah. Here comes the E. Get ready for your ending lick. One. Yeah. And what I was doing there is a very specific thing Django did on a particular recording one. Woo! Very nice. Yeah, no. So again, that gives you some ideas about soloing. Um, I hope it does. You got the harmonic minor scale noodling. Does it 
doesn't matter what chord you're on. Do the same thing over and over, over all three chords. Maybe some. And then you have the triads, you can, where you're targeting, you have the embellishments, the triads, the tri I'm gonna show you the triads again with just one finger, because this is very important that you do this before you do those embellishments. This is E. This is the tricky part, you gotta D minor, A minor, E, D minor just that that was that was not even adding any notes besides the triad notes a c e when you're on the, but the hard part about it is that you have to know the progression you know you have to feel it the, you know the one chord the four chord and the five chord so that you can kind of target those notes but also it's just mapping out these chord shapes a minor d minor you know wherever you wherever you happen to be at but I recommend staying in one location at first. And then once you get this, a, this is where I call these inversions. You have A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor, D minor, D, this is all written on that sheet. D minor, D minor, E major. This is a good exercise separately, then back to A minor. D minor, you can do this. That's chords, and then you break it up into single notes, you know, arpeggiation stuff, or the embellishments. Uh, what else was there? Oh, we didn't get to this one, but this is the, there's plenty of time. There's, uh, for next time, there's upper neighbors. That was a lower neighbor. Here's the upper neighbor. D minor. And then you'll see on that worksheet, soloing ideas, I say on the E chord, go a half step above. And that gives you this really dark. Yeah, it gives you the E and F triad. So the A minor was this, this is just a demonstration, but it, it does show uh, on the worksheet there that I, um, the Gypsy Jazz Bootcamp, this A minor, D minor, E major, a minor. So that will be number two when you see my chips. This is again like, you know, extra credit. <laughs> if you want to go, you know, you might say, no, 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 I just want to do this first all day long. But then you can add the upper neighbor, which is a beautiful uh, color. Um, and then you can combine them. Then you get what I call, Leslie, what do I call the combination lick? Uh, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, this beautiful, this. That's the Mona Lisa motif. That's the combination of the lower, and it, it's still just A minor, but you're going below it and then above it, and then going back to the chord tone. And then the exercise is to take that motif through your triad that you're visualizing. So you get this D minor, E major, A minor. D minor, you know, just you navigate through those changes. That's, again, that's a challenging, it's a big study, but this is why you're here. Um, and then you can add articulations in. It's the same stuff, but it's just kind of disguising the, how simple this approach is. Then you can add this style, those embellishments. So now I'm just adding some articulations, some slurs like this. Or maybe this. But the, the foundation is still there, just targeting those chord tones, but trying to make it fancier and fancier with, you know, your licks, your articulations. But the, you know, this, the idea still is to, hey, I need to just target A minor and D minor and E. So that's all we're gonna do for today. I think that's enough and that hopefully will lay the foundation for some of the other songs. Uh, next week, I actually want to go into Sweet Georgia Brown.